Hey, Bastish Pia for 64K and welcome to episode 18 of Loot and Booty. Welcome back. This episode is going to be jam-packed with thrifting, including my recent vacation to Vancouver, British Columbia. And let's start off this episode with a look at a recent video game convention I went to and all the pickups. Hey, Bastish B here for 64K and welcome to beautiful British Columbia, Vancouver. I'm heading out to the Vancouver Retro Gaming Expo. The show has been off for a couple of years due to the pandemic, but now it's on again. So let's go check it out. And here we are again at the Anvil Center where the show always takes place over the last few years. It's in downtown New Westminster on Columbia Street. It's a fantastic location. Absolutely beautiful out here, and it's time to head on in. And here was the beginning of the show, it's still not many people around, but it was starting to get busy already. You can see all the vendor halls and some arcades to the left. And I decided to start the hunt early found these awesome Apple II sealed games, a whole whack load of them. And a whole bunch of 1701 monitors to sell here, fantastic C64 ones. This excellent model kit for these arcades, I wish I bought that. And this place has multiple levels full of stuff. On the second level is old computers and free play area and up top is gaming competitions. Amiga CD32, playing some Elite. Yeah, Pippin, don't see that often, or a Laser Active. And they had multiple bands and DJs playing throughout the day, which was pretty cool. Pimped out C64, lovely, playing Garus with a old printer. I used to have one of those. I love the name of this game. Ski and Shoot. <laughs> Gets to the point. I honestly should have picked that up. And a bunch of old Atari games. Some good old Star Raiders here. Ooh, Infinite Space. That's an awesome game. So underrated. Some hard dollar Xbox original games. And a Virtual Boy if you want to test one out. Triad Stone, that's a laser active game. And the place is getting pretty busy right now, so I decided to head on out and go up to Game Deals. That's a video game shop that's literally just up the road. And these are the guys that actually put on the whole convention. And if you have a wristband from the show, you get tax-free gaming. What I mean is if you buy anything, it's tax-free for that day only, which is awesome. This place is really small, but it is jam-packed with gems. Look at all the Neo Geo stuff, whoa. I've never actually seen a physical copy of Twisted Metal Small Brawl, that was cool to see. Tons of Saturn games here, I really wanted to buy them all.
So many great RPGs on the 3DS, it's insane. Nice Genesis selection too. I picked up quite a few games here, but I'll show everything at the end. And it was time to head on back into the show. Nice little arcades set up here, even a working battle zone. One of my favorite DC games. Nice PSX import selection. Found a box of good old classic games. That was not 1995 by the way. <laughs> and the only real Commodore stuff that I found there. A few VIC-20 games. And a bunch of cool pillows, homemade stuff, really cool. I wanted to get this, but I did ask the price. I should have got this though, it's one of the few Saturn Capcom games that I don't have yet. Check out this Telstar Mutant, it's got a steering wheel, a gun, and a pedal, wow. Some nice little old classic handheld kind of stuff. Check out some Dreamcast games. Looks like Sonic Adventure has gone up in price dramatically. Unless this vendor was really expensive. Oh, Super Noah's Ark. Wisdom tree at its best. <laughs> and I'm not a huge Nintendo fan, but damn, does this look appealing. I really would have loved to have got that. And they also had some DJ sets, which were really excellent. They were actually even better than the live bands, to be honest. Oh, the Bible game. Sweet goodness. Bunch of import Super Famicom games, pretty good prices. This was a bargain bin by the way, so I don't know what Moonwalker was doing in here. I was like, if this is 10 bucks, I'll get it. Nope, 130. <laughs> and that creepy furry was everywhere. I looked, felt like it was following me. Gotta get out of there. <laughs> And another big bargain table. I found a box of Intellivision stuff for two bucks each. And that pretty much brings this whole show to an end. I had an absolutely excellent time. And I'll definitely be back next year. And it's time to say goodbye to Vancouver. Hope to see you again in 2023. And wow, game deals turned out to be really excellent for me as far as my EA big box list goes. I picked up more at game deals than I did actually at the convention, at least for the stuff that I was actually looking for. I got five games off my list. And the first one up is called Super One on One Jordan vs. Bird. If you had, uh, if you played old computer games in the 80s, you probably know the game One on One by Electronic Arts, it's a basketball game. This is kind of like a 16-bit update of that, and it's obviously got a lot of other extra stuff in it, not just the simple one-on-one, -on -one. but this is fantastic. I actually forgot about this game. It wasn't actually on my EA list, but when I saw it there, I just had to pick it up. And next is a game that was on my list. This is PJ Golf Tour. This is the original one. I picked up number two a few months ago, so that's all the ones I actually want on the Mega Drive slash Genesis. This is it. Again, another excellent golf game. This is the original. These things are in such good condition. They're all the manuals and everything. And uh, yeah, I played these games for hours and uh, great to have this one. Third game off the list is Power Manga. 
If you played like old computer games again in the early 90s or late 80s, you probably know the games by Bullfrog. They did Syndicate and all stuff like that. This is another one. I uh, messed around with this game back in the day on the Amiga. And uh, this is a really good conversion of it, surprisingly. Uh, for a console conversion, it's quite good. And uh, yeah, it's like a strategy game, like a real time strategy game, like one of those, almost like one of those god games, that kind of thing. So, Power Manga. Next is Where in Time is Common San Diego. I used to have Where in the World is Common San Diego on my Genesis and played that thing like crazy. The only thing about this version that I got yet, it hasn't got the big kind of encyclopedia instruction manual, unfortunately, but that's okay. This is one that I messed around with on my Commodore 64. I played it, Where in Time. It's basically the same setup. You're kind of trying to track down Common San Diego, but you're jumping through time instead of going through the world. So it's kind of like a time travel game, teaches you about history and stuff. These games are edutainment games, but I don't really see it that way. I just find them really fun to play. And another one off the list is James Pond 2. This is a codename Robocard, obviously a rip of Robocop. Uh, this is a, um, another game in the James Pond series, and they like... Uh, so this one is a side-scrolling kind of platform game. Uh, very European in flavor, you know, that kind of style, very cutesy, really nice graphics. Another game that I messed around with uh, very briefly in the early 90s, never really got into it, but as soon as I'm collecting EA games, I got it. Doesn't have instructions, but it's still in really excellent condition, so that's another one. Okay, so here's all the pickups from the actual show. Uh, just before I left the show, I noticed this little uh, box of Intellivision games in the corner and I asked the lady how much they were. She said two dollars each complete. Couldn't believe it, so I had to pick up a few. And uh, this first one up is called New Atlantis. This game's kind of like a uh, kind of missile command, that kind of style, and, you know, things are attacking your uh, kind of a home base thing and you're trying to blast them out the sky. Very simplistic. This game is fully complete with instructions, cartridge, the whole thing. The next one is Lock and Chase. This is based on an arcade game by Data East. Came out in the early 80s. It's a little bit of a Pac-Man ripoff, but it's a decent enough variation. I picked it up because it's an arcade game, so I really like that. Fully complete as well. And third is Sub Hunt. So I love submarine games. This uh, is actually a submarine simulator. Would you believe it? On the Intellivision. Never seen this before, and uh, I mean simulator, I use it very um, very generously. <laughs> anyway, for two dollars, I'm not gonna complain. And on to the rest of the pickups. This first one is a Sega Classics. This is the Mega CD version, Japanese version. This is a game that came out with for the Sega CD or Mega CD. It's like a compilation of Mega Drive Genesis games. You got Golden Axe, Streets of Rage, Revenge of Shinobi, and Columns. Yeah, this was dirt cheap as well. It's in such excellent condition. And the only PS2 pickup was this one, the Mad Maestro. I got this for like four bucks or three bucks. Uh, the gas table had a sign that said all the games are half price or what their sticker price was. So yeah, I got this for about three dollars or something, which is excellent. Mad Maestro complete. If you've never played this one, it's kind of a rhythm rhythm game. You're playing a symphony, that kind of thing. You've got to conduct the whole symphony. It's a really lot of fun. It's got good music, and I uh, really enjoyed this when I played it back in the day. And then I managed to get another two games off my EA list. First one up is the Mega Drive Genesis version of Marble Madness. I really love this arcade game. A lot of good versions of this game. This was uh, this is an excellent condition. If you've never played this before, it's based on an old Atari arcade game. You got to get a marble through a bunch of mazes to get to an exit. And the final game from the show is Mutant League Football. This is another game off the list, and uh, this game was a little bit expensive compared to everything else I bought. But I knew it was going to be. The hockey one is even more expensive, unfortunately. There's not a lot of games on that list that are super, super hard dollars, so I'm kind of lucky. Anyway, this is one of them out of the way. This is a really cool uh, version of American football with mutants, and you can just go, think of it like speedball, but with football, and it's just more crazy, and you can kill dudes and blow stuff up. It's just, it's absolutely mental. Um, it's a really good electronic arts game. 
and a cool franchise. I wish they made more of these kinds of games. But anyway, finally got Mutant League Football. And that ended up chopping a lot of games off my big list. So that was a lot of good pickups. I uh, marked off a lot of games off my EA big box list, which is pretty cool. I'm on my way now to the King of Trade. I got a bunch of games that I don't really want in my collection. I'll never end up playing. So I'm gonna go trade them there and see if I can pick up one or two other games in their place. In the meantime, you can check out some of my local thrifts. I'm talking about thrifting here. I'm talking about thrifting in Vancouver, marketplaces, garage sales, everything. Check it out. So people often ask how I get the money to go thrifting all the time. Well, I don't. I simply take all the recycling and get a lot of money out of that actually and go thrifting with that. Three bags get you about $30 and these two bags here, which weren't even that full, got me about $16 you can see here. That's pretty much, that's a lot of money for thrifting. <laughs> Let's go do it. And we've got an LGR wood grain kind of old 80s TV here. Super cool. And I've never seen that Mech Warrior Clan. That's a much later release after I'd played those games. And it's still nice to see PSP games, even if it's a generic sports game, but still pretty cool to see. And some VHS Madness, I got Maximum Risk, it's a Ringo Lamb movie, haven't seen this since the cinema, added to my Jean-Claude Van Damme collection, and I found these weird LCD Hong Kong knockoff things, digital, I don't know what this is supposed to be, it looks like a ripoff of Fist of the North Star or something, it's different characters, pretty weird. And I found an NES, I uh, wasn't willing to pull the trigger because this place doesn't let you test anything or doesn't let you return it, put it that way. So I'm not taking $50 risk on that. And I found this Tobin Spirit Guard from Ghostbusters. I've actually got the red edition. I think this is a Loot Crate exclusive. I couldn't see any differences between my one and their one besides the green cover. Herb Alpert, not a good way to start off looking for records. Oh my goodness, Rosenshans, what? This dude looks like Jason Bateman, look at him! <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, the Chocolate Soldier, Oscar Strauss, oh jeez. We're in heavy territory here. Oh, not Streisand! No! Tainted it. Back to some VHS goodness, I got a double dose of awesome. Dolph Lundgren and the Punisher, the 80s version. And Swayze and Steel Dawn, the post-apocalyptic goodness. Some good games here, Condemned Bloodshot 2, that's really cool, really have it. Some Dark Souls 2, nice. Even Carrier Command, I've virtually never seen this. I played the Commodore 64 version, so I had to pick this up. And on my way home, I noticed a massive garage sale going on in this neighborhood. So I decided to walk around and check them out. There was ones pretty much everywhere. Didn't find much, but I'll just show you what I did manage to see. And a nice board game here, Jumanji, pretty cool, I already have it though. Worst collection of Wii games I've ever seen in my life. This explains how the Wii sold so many trashy games, like this family bought all this garbage and <laughs> it's the worst selection of games I've ever seen. Wow. Wow. And there's some of these Atari flashbacks, they were two dollars each, I just had to pick them up even though they're not very good. <laughs> and back to the thrifting. And a whole bunch of garbage here. Yeah. Did find some diamonds in the rough though. Got Test Drive Unlimited yeah. This is pretty good. I played this on my 360 with the steering wheel. It was awesome. Found a VHS DVD combo. These things are expensive. This was only $14. It's a good deal. And Adam's Family Values. Add that to the collection. I got both movies. Connect Adventures. You see this thing everywhere. Force Unleashed. Pretty good. A whole bunch of shovelware as usual. And another one of these weird peripherals for the DS. There were so many weird ones. And a cool quick shot joystick. I would have picked this up, but it was really clunky and beat up. Felt awkward. And some more games. Got the double combo set here. This is Marvel Ultimate Alliance and Forza 2. And Battle Stations Pacific. That's a really good game. I already have it though. 
next rift. And I found the Samba de Amigo Maracas for the Wii, they're pretty cool, I never had those. And obviously the GameCube stuff was behind glass, it's so expensive to collect for that. Now there's one of these Samsui TV VHS combos, I actually got one of those, very cool. Found Taxi Driver on VHS. And another Jean-Claude movie, Death Warrant, I've only seen this movie once in the 80s, interested to see it again. And the worst controller ever, Power Game Crystal, <laughs> what the heck, it felt so light like it didn't even exist. Superpad PSX 1000, even better. D-pad felt like a soggy pizza, but anyway, <laughs> next rift. And I found this Indiana Jones Explores the Vikings, never even seen these before, like some sort of educational history books. Pretty cool, if I saw these as a kid I would have definitely picked them up, it's very interesting. And records, I finally found some decent stuff, David Bowie, Let's Dance, I already have it. As well as the Pat Benatar, I already got this one, damn it. And then Kiss had to come and ruin everything. Ugh. And back to the games. And I found a real trashy game, Alone in the Dark, this newer version. I played this, I didn't like it back in the day, but I'm willing to give it another chance. And I found a whole bunch of cool stuff here, VHS's, Young Masters, a really excellent Jackie Chan movie, I think it's a Young Wu Ping directed that. And this is Half a Loaf of Kung Fu, this is an even earlier movie, I barely remember this one, it was pretty fun as well. And then the really excellent Lord of the Rings, uh, Ralph Bakshi cartoon, fantastic movie that. Sometimes the magazine section can give a bit of gold. Found an old issue of Game Informer, not super old, but 2006 is pretty vintage at this point. And some more games, and I found this GM Steel Horizon by Konami, I've never seen this before. A World War II turn-based submarine game, sign me up. Wow. Next Rift. And some more VHS, Mission Galactica, The Silent Attack, what? This must be a compilation of episodes, I guess. Lloyd Bridges, what? And some more cursed Wii <laughs> shovelware, ultimate duck hunting, sweet goodness. Even worse, ugh, ugh, this is just, this is just ruined, that ruined gaming for me. <laughs> and somebody unloaded the entire manga collection, awesome. Manga Blast, that was a cool magazine, I used to read that. I almost missed this, but they had Dominion Tank Police, Masamuna Shiro, this is such a cool graphic novel. Highly recommended, the artwork is amazing. Definitely pick that up. And oof, that's not gonna sell well. <laughs> and back to the games, and we found N Plus on the PSP, totally picking that up. And whoa, Berserk the board game. This is amazing, this thing was complete and excellent condition. Couldn't believe I found that. Came out in the early 80s, I think 1982 or 3. And we got Metal Storm, The Destruction of Jared Sin. This movie is horrible, I love it. And I found a, looks like a 8mm film camera, I wasn't sure if it was, but man it looked cool, don't know anything about it though. Found another one of these quick shot style joysticks, was gonna pick it up, but I had to see what system it was for, NES, not really interested in that. Don't know why Madden's behind the glass there, <laughs> it's worthless. Some real generic titles there. And I found this weird Michael Jackson calendar that was unopened from 2011. We'll just leave that there. Let's go to the records. Oof, not a good start. Oh my goodness, Richard Simmons. Ah! Tainted the thrift. <laughs> And back to the games, Russia with Love, great game, really have it. And uh, I'm so sick of Star Wars at this point, Disney's just pummeling that franchise into the ground. And I found a Tiger Woods PSP game. This is what you usually find there at thrift stores. And back to the records, braving this again, oh, Hungarian folk songs, not a good start. 
<sighs> and Hungry strikes back with songs and dances. <laughs> and just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, Donny Osmond. Ah! <laughs> tainted the thrift. And I decided to go to the Cloverdale Market. This is out in Vancouver, British Columbia, when I went on vacation. And I saw one of these knockoff NESs, 620 games. Power and NTC compatible though. <laughs> And I found a drone. Apparently, drones are now powered by Xbox 360 controllers. And another sign that the world's coming to an end. I'll leave that as it is. <laughs> Jack Sparrow, a bunch of novels, never seen this before, pretty weird. And this woman liked to collect things in groups, very impressive. <laughs> And I almost missed this. Wonder Woman VHS, 70s Wonder Woman, not that Wonder Woman 84 garbage. And <laughs> little R2D2. This guy has a lot of gains, but they're so sun bleached, they're like worthless. Found another Wii game I've never seen before. There's just so many of these. London Taxi Rush Hour, some sort of crazy taxi knockoff. And I went inside the main hall. This is where they have more stuff found these tin kind of printings. Pretty cool. I like the Paperboy one. And I found a bunch of comic books. I never knew they did a Rocky Horror Picture Show one. Pretty weird. <laughs> and this guy had a really good collection of 360 games. Ace Combat 6, that's great. Actually all these games are really good. And GoBots. The good old knockoff Transformers. And I even spotted Pit Stop here. It was a Coleco version there. I got the Commodore one, so I don't need it. X Men, I love this Genesis version. Sings upside down. Get that sorted, dude. And I almost bought this game. I was contemplating it. Super Godzilla for the Super Nintendo. Boxed. 65. I don't know if that's good. Seemed a bit much. Three Stooges! And let's start checking out all the thrifting finds. We start off with two games over here. This first one I picked up from King of Trade. It was super cheap. I don't remember how much it was, but this is a JRPG if you've never played it. It's called Eternal Sonata. I played and completed this game. It's really cool. Uh, it's a very strange concept. You are playing, well, the main character is Chopin, the uh, composer and he's on his deathbed, he's almost dead, and he's having some sort of fever dream, and you play the fever dream, and that's what the RPG is. I know it sounds super weird, it's got awesome classical music. This is a strange game, I'm glad to have this back. And the other one was Carrier Command Gaia Mission. So this was released by Rising Star Games, they release a lot of shoot 'em ups and obscure games, and this is no exception, I think I've seen this game once before. This is based on the original games from the 80s, if you've ever played them, on the Amiga and the Commodore 64 Carrier Command. It's kind of like a real-time strategy game, that kind of vibe. This one looks like it takes that idea and runs with it. Um, interesting to see what this one's about. A couple of books over here. This first one is an issue of Game Informer. So, you don't often come across old gaming mags anymore. I know this isn't considered super old. It's 2006. It's over 15 years old at this point, which is, which, you know, is fairly old, even though if you look at the games, it feels like I played these yesterday, uh, Just Cause and all that, but uh, it's always nice to find these, and uh, they're just brimming with information about classic games, he has an advert for Okami, and this was a must buy, this is Dominion Tank Police, this is by Masamuno Shiro, he did a Ghost in the Shell, if you're not aware. Anyway, this is a fantastic uh, kind of manga. It's totally worth uh, checking it out. The artwork is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, the characters are awesome. The cat girls are hilarious. You really should check this out. It's one of my favorite uh, manga series out of, out of classic manga anyway. It's more VHS. First up we've got Taxi Driver, this is the Martin Scorsese movie with Robert De Niro. This movie is super weird, I, mean, I originally watched it as a kid, I shouldn't have been watching it, but anyway, uh, I just like the performances and the style of it, it's so gritty, it's got that like 70s vibe, there's just 
can't replicate this kind of movie. Another one I haven't watched in many years is Death Warrant. I think I've only watched Death Warrant once on video back in the late 80s. So I know this is the one where he goes to prison and all that. And uh, ah, this is the one that's, you know, just a vague memory of it. I, th I think I remember I thought it was good but not great. So anyway, another one to the Jean-Claude collection. And these are two more games I used to have back in the day in my collection. This first one is Alone in the Dark. This is like a late 2000s, mid 2000s uh, game in the same uh, Alone in the Dark franchise. It's released by Atari. Now, i got to admit, I didn't like this game when I originally had it on my Xbox 360. I played it for a while and I thought it had really cool concepts, but it just doesn't come together all that well. I saw this really cheap and I'm willing to give it another shot. Maybe um, I was too, uh, you know, I loved the original so much, I didn't give it much of a chance. Or maybe it is just a bad game. <laughs> um, I'm always willing to give something another shot if it was cheap. And this one I also had and I really enjoyed it. Uh, this is Test Drive Unlimited. This is part of the Test Drive series. Uh, this is also released by Atari. and. Uh, I used to have this and I used to have the Xbox 360 steering wheel set up, you know, to play this game, which made it insane. Uh, this was super cool, some good concepts also, try to change up the formula of the test drive series again. And uh, yeah, good to have this one back. And some more over here, this is Half a Loaf of Kung Fu. I don't really remember this one all that much. Um, I remember the beginning title sequence where he's just in this like black room and just doing a whole bunch of kung fu moves and fighting guys. That's all I remember about this movie. A lot of Jackie Chan's early 80s, late 70s stuff is a bit of a blur because they all have the same kind of stories and all that. They're all set in like, you know, old school China and they're just beating dudes up and there's a lot of comedy. This one's no exception. And yeah, it's Ralph Bakshi's Lord of the Rings. This is a super excellent cartoon. If you've never seen this before, you really should check it out. Peter Jackson owes a lot to this adaptation for his movies, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. So there's a lot of things in here which are replicated almost exactly the same if you've ever seen those. So I wish they had actually completed this. This is only half the story, unfortunately. They never made the rest. I don't know why. Don't know what the story is behind it, but uh, it's brilliant regardless. And the last two games is a double dose of PSP action. I got this one called N Plus. That's a ninja, and it's kind of like a you gotta make it through these like kind of maze kind of things. Um, I've only seen a video of this game. I've never actually played it, so I can't give you too much information on it. But you play a ninja, so that's got me sold. Again, it's complete, super cheap. It's also by Atari. See a theme going on here. <laughs> and lots and lots of VHS pickups. This is two more. First up is Commando. I haven't watched this movie in decades. I loved it. It's so ridiculous. I think this was by Mark L. Lester. Yeah, Mark L. Lester. He did some really cool kind of action movies. He also did a Showdown in Little Tokyo, the one with Dolph Lundgren and Brandon Lee. It's a super cheese fest. Totally recommend watching it. It's bad, but it's so good. <laughs> Commando is kind of the same kind of vibe. It's just so ridiculous. And this other one is Mission Galactica. This is the Cylon Attack. Now, this is kind of weird. I don't know anything about this. I was a big fan of this series when I was a kid. You know, the 70s TV show. Uh, this got nothing to do with the remake, you know, the modern ones. But, uh, this looks like it might be some sort of compilation where they edited a few episodes together to get like a full movie kind of deal, it's 108 minutes. So yeah, I haven't looked this up yet, but that's what I'm assuming. And the last game pickup is Steel Horizon. I can't believe I found this game. I know nothing about it. It's released by Konami, I'm pretty sure they didn't make it, it's probably just uh, they're publishing it. But anyway, uh, this is a World War II, looks like a turn-based strategy with some real-time action in there. Submarines and ships and everything. Wow, this is like such a game that I would love. I can't believe it. Super cheap, fully complete. Uh, can't wait to actually play this. Another two more here. This one is called Metal Storm, The Destruction of Jaredson. <laughs> this is a really bad movie. I would not suggest you watch it. Uh, I've seen this, I watched this a couple of years ago again and uh, you know I thought maybe it's better than I remember, it's definitely not. Uh, pretty sure this is a 3D movie if I remember correctly. 
you can use uh, those, uh, you know, the red and the green glasses to see a few effects. There's like about five in the whole movie. It's not even worth it. And yeah, it's a bad science fiction movie from the 80s. This is Young Master. This is a Jackie Chan classic. Absolutely excellent movie. This is one of my favorites of his old school stuff, you know, the late 70s, early 80s stuff. This is his best movies. If you've never seen these, you really should. Always look out for Front Row Entertainment. They release these movies as they were in the 80s. So if you watched it there with that kind of funky dub, funky English dub with those really big, chunky Hong Kong sound effects, and that's what these versions are. They didn't screw them up like Dimension Films and Miramax did with when they re-released all these. So definitely go for these. They're more down and dirty, but much better to watch. And I got these Samba Domingo um, Maracas. This is for the Wii version. You can see, put the Wii controller in there. Uh, Samba Domingo was a super cool game on the Dreamcast. I absolutely loved it. Played it to death with the full peripheral. They really. They re-released it with the, obviously the motion controls on the Wii and uh, I've actually got a copy of the game. I haven't played it yet because I didn't have the maracas. It seemed pointless. Now that I do, awesome. And some more VHS. First up is Steel Dawn. If you've never seen this, this is a cool post-apocalyptic movie with Patrick Swayze. This is like mid 80s or something. This is like this movie was shot in South Africa. That's the reason why I know it so well. It was shot in the where I used to live, and there's, you know, there's a lot of South African actors in here, which always makes me laugh. Um, I don't know why, because you see, used to see them on TV, and then you saw them with, like, a real actor. Not to imply that they weren't good actors, but to see them with, like, a Hollywood actor, it was super weird. But uh, this is a fun, dumb, kind of Mad Max ripoff movie, and uh, I kind of like it. And he has the 80s version of The Punisher, it's with Dolph Lundgren. I actually like this movie. It's not the greatest movie ever made, but it's pretty cool anyway. Um, it's much better than that horrible one with Thomas Jane and John Travolta. There's a piece of trash. But uh, anyway, this is way better. It's again, it's not the greatest. It's got some good action, and I just love Dolph movies. And the last two VHSs, yeah, this is Rambo First Blood. What can I say about this? With this, I finally got the entire Rambo series, at least all the ones that were released on VHS. And yeah, it's Maximum Risk. This is another Jean Claude movie. This is a late. Uh, mid to late 90s one. This is uh, this one was directed by Ringo Lam. Yeah, Ringo Lam. He did a lot of really good Hong Kong action movies. This isn't by any means uh, high on his list of his great movies, but uh, it's a decent action flick. It's not all that great. Again, I'd like to watch this again and see what it's like. And the final pickup was my personal favorite out of all the thrifting I've done over the last couple months. This is Berserk, the board game by Milton Bradley. This came out in the early 80s, a couple years after the arcade game was released. It's based on the arcade game. And this thing is fully complete. I've actually looked inside. It's got everything. Amazing. This was really cheap. I can't believe the actual quality of this. It's absolutely perfect. Uh, like when you go thrifting, you just never know what you're going to find. That's the thrill of the hunt. That's the thrill of the hunt for me. And finding something like this is just amazing. So thrifting has been kind of all over the place lately. I haven't found a lot of games to add to the collection, but that is more to do with the fact that I've got most of the common games at this point. So there's, I'm not really, I'm kind of skipping them all when I see them at thrift stores. There's a lot of stuff I'm skipping over, a lot of really good games. So again, I say this every time, if you're into the last few generations of games, you should seriously hit up thrift stores. You can get them for dirt cheap, but that's not gonna last. Just like everything, those games will be expensive in a couple of years and you're gonna seriously regret it. So you should get out there and start doing that. And also on my recent uh, vacation to Vancouver, I hit up one of the best toy stores I've ever been to in my life. It's called Toy Traders. Check it out. And here it is, Toy Traders in Langley, British Columbia. This is still the coolest toy store I've ever been to. The scope of it is absolutely massive. And if you've been following the series since the beginning, I did a video right at the beginning <laughs> on this place that nobody watched.
Leatherface soda, anybody? Mumra! Power Rangers section. This is my go to area. I just love it. There's an insane amount of figures in this place. It's ridiculous. A little bit of Deadpool action. This battle scene is absolutely epic. I'm in awe of it every time I see it. Even got the Ghostbusters off to the left here. Good feathers! I can't believe they had those dudes. Danger Mouse. Jeez, you don't see that here in Canada very often. It's so obscure over here. Upstairs is like a retro 80s section where it's just got used uh, 80s toys. It's another shot from up top from a different angle. You can see how massive this place is. That's all loose G.I. Joes. We've got a small gaming section. It's not very great, but I did manage to find Conflict in Vietnam by Micropros. If it was the C64 version, I actually would have bought it. Gobots! I keep on running into these things lately. From seeing them never till seeing them everywhere. It's so weird. Ah, pity they didn't have these powered on yet. We got there just as they opened. This awesome TMNT pinball machine. Just look at it. Even John McLean is here. I love the retro packaging on these turtles. These are exactly like the ones I had in the 80s. The exact same packaging and style. It's awesome. Sam and Max figure here, little Max. Earl Grey Hot. A little Baby Yoda. And yes, I know it's not Baby Yoda, but that's what I'm going to call it. Super cool Masters of the Universe selection there.
Their game selection is pretty weak though, that's the only thing, but it is called Toy Traders, so what do you expect? And that was just one half of the place. So I didn't really pick up anything at Toy Traders, I just like looking. Obviously my daughter was with us and uh, she obviously managed to find some toys, <laughs> so got a few things for her. But straight after that, I went to a local retro video game store. And here we are, Willow. This is an excellent retro gaming store. They not only have retro games, but movies and vinyl, music and everything. This is a little shot to give you a sense of the scope of the place. Tons of PlayStation, original PlayStation and other goodies. They even have a Vita section, <laughs> don't see that often anymore. I found Taz Escape from Mars, pretty cool platformer. That's Fire Emblem, such a great game on the 3DS. Found a little retro section over here. Those games are super expensive. Even got some Neo Geo carts here, some Saturn, Sega CD. Found an Xbox original game that I don't have, Silent Scope Collection. And I spotted another one of the EA games I needed for my big box collection. And yes, the two games I picked up from Willow. The first one is The Aquatic Game starring James Pond. This is kind of a, a spin-off of the James Pond games. I've never actually played this one before to be perfectly honest. I know it's like a multi-event sports game, kind of one of those wacky ones, you know, the ones that you used to play on your Commodore 64 or whatever back in the day, which were super popular. Anyway, this is part of the, you know, it stars James Pond, so I guess it's like a little bit of a spin-off. I look forward to playing this one. This is another one off my EA Big Box list. And the other game I got is the Silent Scope Complete on the original Xbox. I've never actually come across this before. It's got Silent Scope 1, 2, and 3, the arcade games. They're like uh, light gun games where you play a sniper. This also says it's uh, light gun compatible, so that's pretty damn cool. These games are all com fully complete as well and in excellent condition. So that's a really good pickup. I've only ever played the first two Silent Scopes, so the third one will be a cool mystery for me. Okay, so I've just parked across the road from the King of Trade. I'm going to take those games and see what we can get. Okay, so let's have a look at the two games that I picked up from King of Trade. So I took all that stuff, a whole bunch of Rainbow Six games, which I knew I'm never actually going to play or have no desire to play. You might as well just trade those kind of things up and get some stuff at game stores that you actually really want. And uh, so I picked up two games out of that. First up is Sega Soccer Slam on the PS2. I originally had this on my GameCube when it originally came out and it's really cool it's like an arcade style soccer game three on three and it's a lot of fun it's got cool characters it's uh it's just fast paced good old arcade action and the other game i got is called nano breaker this is a late konami release 2005 it's like a hack and slash kind of 3d game similar to the uh, castlevania 3d stuff and uh, it's pretty good. Uh, I messed around with this game just very briefly, so I don't really know much about it besides the fact that you've got a massive sword and you go chop up like uh, monsters and uh, big mechanical beasts. But anyway, this is one I've always been intrigued to play and I uh, finally got it. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed another episode full of thrifting. Thanks for joining me, Bastish B at 64K. I hope you had a good time. And if you can please like and subscribe, that'll be greatly appreciated. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.